to the gathering at Scott Memorial's online service. Jamie, you have a joke for us before we get into announcements? Of course. How did the frog burn its tongue? How did the frog burn its tongue? It tried to eat a firefly. <laughs> Good one, buddy. So, Jamie, did you know today is our last day for Vacation Bible School? It's Ooh. been three weeks since we started. And do you know what time Vacation Bible School is at today? Three o'clock. That's right, everybody. Our last of our virtual series. We want to thank you, Miss Carmen, for putting on a wonderful Vacation Bible School for us. And thank you, Miss Bobby and Miss Liz and Miss Kathy and Miss Allie for all making it a wonderful engagement for the kids. So, the listing off those volunteers, we also are always looking for more volunteers. We need people to help restock our food pantry. We're in urgent need for non-perishable foods like um, boxes of mac and cheese. We also need things like plastic grocery bags so people can take the food with them home. We need things like peanut butter and in general people to help us pack the food boxes, help deliver them. Uh, if you have a hitch on your car, we need people who can tow the church trailer so that we can um, hand out food to those in need. And let's see, Jamie, what else? We need volunteers to help weed the church garden beds, pick up trash around the building, clean the church. There's lots of ways to get involved, right, bud? Uh-huh. All right, so let's say thank you to everybody who's joining us this week. Thank you. And to our guests out there joining us for the first time, it's great to have you. Have a wonderful Sunday, and we will start the church service. Wait, almost. I want to show them my lost teeth. Here's Jamie's lost teeth. All right. for that awesome hymn and now is when we usually have our offering so thank you to all who are still able to give of your tithes and offerings as you can see your church is very alive and still loving our neighbors and loving God in all that we do so thank you all for your ability to continue to give and help support our awesome 
mission as we join God in the amazing work that God is doing. And now children gather around. It's time for the children's moment. Thank you, Ms. Carmen. Good morning, boys and girls. So I have a question for you. Has anyone ever bumped you or knocked you or pushed you and you ended up spilling something? Like spilling a drink all over you, right? And it made a complete mess. How did you react? Did you get mad or angry? Did you yell at them? Did you say a bad word maybe? So I want you to think about that. Sometimes people are gonna bump into us or life, right? Life might push us and shove us around or knock us over, right? A best friend might hurt us a parent might get mad at us. A loved one might get really sick or even die. We might find out that mom or dad have a new job and they have and we have to move away from all of our friends. Right? Big stuff like that might happen. And it can feel like we're getting pushed around like like we're getting knocked over like that cup or or that drink that you had in your hand right and it's and it's all over the place and it's a mess right but what about instead of pouring out of our cup is anger and jealousy and hate what if when life knocks us down or pushes us around, even when we don't want it to, what if instead of spilling out of us, instead of it being anger and jealousy and resentment, what if it was love and patience and self-control? I know that's really hard, right? It's hard that when life does something to us or something bad happens to us, for us to pour out the fruit of the Spirit, essentially, right? We've been talking a lot about that in our gatherings time, about what does it look like to live a fruitful life? And that's having patience and kindness and showing love to others. So I want you to think about what are you filling your cup? What are you filling inside yourself? If you are trying each day to be more loving, to be more kind, to be more patient, to have self-control when you're trying something new or eating a bag of chips and, and you know it's okay, I need to stop. Or you see somebody that might need some help, not being told that you have to go help them, right? When we pray and we do all the things to honor God, when something happens in our life and we're pushed around and we're knocked over, that instead of anger and hate coming out of us, spilling out of us, rather it'll be love and patience and kindness. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, Thank you so much for our friends and our family. Thank you for all the people in our lives that you constantly help show us that we are loved. Dear Lord, help us to show love to others. Help us to show kindness to others. Dear Lord, help us to just fill our cup, fill ourselves with the fruit of the Spirit to practice each and every day so that when we are knocked down or experience something hard or difficult that we will pour out all the fruits of the spirit and that we will make you proud we ask this in your son's name in jesus name amen
Boys and girls, I hope you have a wonderful day today and I will see you next time. Bye. Good morning and welcome back. It is my humble pleasure to be here with this morning with all of you. My name is Jeremy. The greatest trick the devil ever played was making us believe he did not exist. Charles Bruder Winner. Weeks ago, Pastor Stephanie contacted me and asked me if I would prayerfully consider sharing with you all my own testimony. My first response to her was, there is nothing to think about. My answer is yes. Although the thought of public speaking terrifies me, my answer is yes. How do I say no to the opportunity to say thank you to a group of people who have given so much to me and my family? How do I say no to a task that God himself has asked? This is a place I have had so many great opportunities to serve God. I've had the humble honor to serve on the Board of Trustees for almost three years. This year, I was even asked and voted as the chairholder position. I've worked side by side with many of you on various scale projects over the years, including one of my favorite missions, our awesome congregation hosts, Fresh Fruit Wednesday. 
I can't even describe the level of magnitude this night is for people. I've literally shared tears with some. It is just impossible for me to say no to God's will. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So here we are. It's been many, many months now since we have sat together in person for service. Since the beginning of that time, I have heard and spoke to many, literally thousands, who have blamed our government for closing down our church and our services. And this is where it all began for me. This is where I knew I must throw down my fears, follow God's will, and preach his truths. But what are those truths that God wants me to share? The truth is God closed down the building, not the governor nor the president. There is no man on earth that could ever close the bride of Christ. Yet what about the church? Here we are. You see, folks, we are the church, and God saw that we had gotten comfortable and lazy in our ways. The gospel had become limited to only one voice muffled within four walls. But what is the word of God that cannot be heard by those that need to hear it? Our relationship with God has become stagnant. We have not grown with God, and of this I was guilty too. This was our call as Christians to start preaching outside the building, as only we could light the way for those in the dark. A reading from the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. In the past six months, I started speaking out, spreading God's word. Got shunned by a few, but joined by more. It turned quickly into a journey as I connected and prayed with more and more Christians. I've since lost count, but well into the hundreds. It became more and more apparent to me that, yes, we are the church. God's church is not closed. It's growing. And here we are. A reading from the letter from Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in presence of God our Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. God gave us all a voice. He gave me a voice and you a voice. About five months ago, I received a calling. I believe we all get many throughout our lives. But on this particular day, a man from Georgia, a man I had barely spoke with before, sent me a private message through Facebook. This man had asked me if I would be interested and joining him and a small group of his friends in an online prayer meeting. It turned out that he had been listening and following the message that I had been giving, and he wanted me to actually lead the prayer meeting. As I agreed without hesitation to be here today, I said yes. And as I stand here today speaking to all of you, I've never done this before either. So I set up a Facebook group. He and I both added some friends. We planned and scheduled the date. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew God was with me. The time came 
and we prayed that night for those suffering from illness, pain, and loss. The date was March 28th and was intended to be a one-time event. What started with a couple dozen has grown to a couple hundred since then, and the meetings haven't stopped since. We still meet online every Saturday evening to this day. So here we are. We are back together, even if in limited numbers. This time we cannot allow our voices to be confined within four walls. Yet let us learn from our pastors, our teachers, and each other. This is not only our time of worship, but also of practice so that we, the church, can carry God with us in our lives as we grow with God and build that relationship with Him into others. I will share with you a quote of mine passed into me while at home one night praying a few years ago. When you give your life to God, He will then give you His kingdom. So here I am. I am here today because I was called to be here called to give my message to you. Maybe this only spoke to one of you. I pray it spoke to all. I think the most valuable point I hope to make today is we are the church. We don't leave the church after Sunday morning service. We take it with us and in us. Grow your church with Christ and our Lord God. Give back more to those who gave to you even the unseen things they never even realized they gave you. After all, giving to others is the greatest gift you can receive. This is proven here today, as I am blessed with the gift to give you my own testimony. So as some of you know, I grew up and was raised a Catholic. Perhaps you've seen me kneel in the back after communion. It's just part of a practice I keep within myself. We Catholics kneeled a lot. We had another practice I was always fond of. At one point every service, we would stand and wish our surrounding members, peace be with you. It usually involved a handshake and a hug but for obvious reasons, we can't do that right now. But we will. I'd like to ask that we please take a quick moment to stand and give the peace sign to each other. Say hello, and I love you. After all, that's what family does. The last reading, which we all have probably heard at one time, has become one of my foundation readings. I find its powerful words a source of strength and courage, especially when all seems lost. A reading from Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in all the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet the readiness, with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in all the spirit on, on all the occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert 
always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. I would like to thank you all for this opportunity to speak to you today. I love you all, and I wish you all the blessings of God. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Bobby, and Pastor Stephanie asked me to leave prayer time while she is on vacation. So, good morning. I would like us to begin with a moment of silence and a moment of opening our own hearts to God and opening our minds to his spirit and opening our souls to his love. So let us begin. God, we come to you this day, some of us with sadness in our hearts, sadness over the loss of loved ones, sadness over anxieties and depression that we battle, sadness over many of the decisions that we have to make day to day. But God, we also come to you this morning with joys, joys over a new gathering that was born joys over the amazing volunteers that we have who show up week after week to serve your people, to be your hands and feet in this world. We thank you for the abundance of food that we have been blessed with through all of this COVID-19 need. We thank you for the community of faith that we belong to for the amazing prayer warriors that pray over each other every week in our church. We come this morning thanking you for the fact that our building may be closed for worship, but our building is being used to serve your people. God, we ask for prayers for our nation as we are going through an election year. Please let us remember that we can agree to disagree and that one thing that's wonderful about where we live is that we're free to have our own opinions and we're free to vote for who we feel is best. God, I just thank you for our military who sacrifice every day to serve their country I lift up their families who serve as well. God, I thank you for Pastor Stephanie, our fearless leader, who boldly serves you and boldly serves our church every week. We ask that you give her the strength that she needs to continue to be your servant and our leader. Now may we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, join, please join with me in our prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ our Lord died for us while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And thank you all for forgiving me as well. And now the Gilstrap young ladies are going to lead us in the blessing over the love feast. Join me as we prepare for the love feast. 
Holy Comforter, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. Hello, welcome to the church. We have orange juice and bread. Father, thank you for the wonderful service today. Thank you for the gift of virtual connection. Whether our building is open or closed, we are the church and we praise you even when we physically cannot be together. Your word tells us that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. Thank you for being with us wherever we are and in all that we are doing. We ask that you continue to protect our families and our homes. Protect our church as we serve the community and protect those who are coming in and out of the church. Help us to listen to your voice and to follow you wherever you are leading us this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be blessed, everyone. 
Thank you all for joining us for worship today. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for leading us in a wonderful and inspiring message. And go have a blessed week, friends. We'll see you next week.